Hello everyone and welcome to this e-course on zero emission zones for freight to raise awareness and build capacity among urban and regional authorities. My name is Céline Baldearay and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Université Gustave Eiffel, which is based east of Paris, where I'm part of a research chair called Logistic City. In the first module of this first unit, I'm going to introduce you the main challenges and trends that characterize urban freight transport. I will talk about the importance and diversity of freight, as well as the negative side effects it has on society and the environment called externalities. When people today think about freight in cities, many think immediately of parcel deliveries, following the growing tendency of consumers to shop online and the attention that growth has generated. E-commerce is, however, only a small part of urban goods transport, and in the visual visuals on this slide, I demonstrate some. Supplying grocery and other retail stores, collection of household and other waste, maintenance and service trips, two men deliveries of furniture and white goods, and deliveries to construction sites are other examples that go alongside parcel deliveries. All of these activities are essential for well-functioning and enjoyable cities. What the visual on the slide also shows is the diversity in goods vehicles, which are basically classified in light goods vehicles below 3.5 tons, the vans, and heavy goods vehicles or the trucks. In a lot of cities, an increase of bicycles and cargo bicycles for urban freight transport can be noted as well, a subject to which I will come back to in the second module of this unit. For American cities, retail is estimated to produce between 30 and 40% of urban freight activities, accommodation and food another 10 to 20 percent and service intensive sectors present 5 to 10 percent of urban freight traffic. Following a more concrete and detailed example, the graph on this slide visual, visualizes the urban freight transport situation in the city of Rotterdam in the Netherlands, subdivided in heavy and light goods vehicles and classified in different sectors, fresh, waste, bulk, express and parcels, facility and service and construction. As the graph shows, transport for food retail and restaurants summarized in the fresh category represents almost one-fourth of heavy goods vehicles kilometers, while almost 30% of vehicles can be tied to bulk goods, which includes fashion and general retail. In the light goods vehicle category, kilometers driven for facilities and services are most important. This includes maintenance and reparation services and supply of goods to hospitals, offices and public services. This is an urban freight category that gets often forgotten, although recently some interesting research projects were set up. Construction transport takes almost one-fourth of kilometers in this category as well. As you can see, the vehicle kilometers for parcel and express deliveries are limited to 4% of heavy goods vehicles and 5% of light goods vehicles. Yet what we know is that the business-to-consumer category of urban freight transport is growing while the business-to-business -business category has remained relatively stable over time. In American cities, parcel deliveries to homes already represent 10 to 20% of urban freight transport. In most cities, on average, only 15% to 25% of the urban vehicle kilometers traveled can be attributed to freight transport. Yet these vehicles occupy approximately 20 to 40 percent of motorized road space, space that is scarce in cities and cannot be used for other purposes such as leisure and greenery. They cause 20 to 40 percent of urban transport related CO2 emissions, the primary driver of climate change, and they are also responsible for approximately 30 to 50 percent of air pollutants such as particulate matter or PM and nitrogen oxides or NOx major sources of public health issues. In some cities, we have a more detailed view on the impacts of urban freight transport. The graph on this slide shows figures for Paris, Brussels, London and Tokyo. The share of urban freight transport in total transport and the share of CO2 emissions it is responsible for. These disproportionate impacts of freight transport are due to its presence in cities that is more spatially concentrated within urban centers than passenger traffic, thereby affecting more population. Light and heavy goods vehicles also emit more than private cars. Then there are some trends that impact urban freight transport and their negative side effects. Urbanization is a first, in which the number of urban habit inhabitants is growing in cities all around the world. This increases the demand for goods and services, 
and thus urban freight transport as well. However, as this graph shows, the demand for freight transport grows faster than the population and the demand for passenger transport in urban areas. The impact of urban freight transport also depends on urban characteristics such as size, urbanization rate, population densities, infrastructure densities, um, urban form, urban sprawl, and so on. A second trend is fragmentation, which loosely translates as the decreasing efficiency of urban freight transport, meaning that less goods are transported with the same amount or even a larger amount of vehicles. This slide shows several causes of fragmentation, including small stocks, for example, at retailers, that need frequent replenishments, just-in-time replenishment that limits the time to efficiently plan transport, a lack of coordination and collaboration upon, of, among transport operators and among transport receivers, growing e-commerce and service sectors, and so on. This has considerable effects on how urban freight transport is organized, decreasing drop densities, drop sizes, fill and fill rates, among others, and as such causing delays, pushing the use of smaller vehicles, increasing empty running, and so on. Ultimately, these inefficiencies result in increasing externalities. The third trend is called logistics sprawl, a term used to describe the outward migration pattern of logistics facilities from urban centers to suburban and rural areas. This is a historic pattern that is a result of increasing competition for space in urban areas and subsequent increases in real estate prices. Urban real estate costs are generally a lot higher in city dense areas and decrease when moving further away. A demand for goods is concentrated in cities. Distant distribution centers from which uh, freight vehicles depart means longer distances and thus increasing externalities. The visual, visual shown on this slide demonstrates the average distance of warehouses in cities around the world from the urban center. In terms of externalities that logistics sprawl generates, Recent studies show the importance of also taking facility characteristics and urban sprawl leading to sprawling demand for goods into consideration. Yet in high demand areas in particular, prohibiting logistics facilities does cause negative externalities to increase significantly. Establishing low and eventually zero emission zone zones is an effective instrument to achieve the global objective of combating climate change and local objectives of enhancing urban quality of life. Next to that, cities are implementing a range of other initiatives as well that imply transforming the current transport system. Such initiatives include pedestrianization on various scales, the redesign of certain areas in eco-neighborhoods, and a renewed focus on proximity by means of X-minute cities. Often, implementations go hand in hand. Following the example of other European cities, such as Madrid, Milan and Rome, the city of Paris envisions to largely pedestrianize its central areas by 2022. At the same time, it pursues to become a 15-minute city, allowing all residents to access their daily needs, from food to work to exercise to socializing and everything in between, within a quarter of an hour on foot or by bike. The concept, or slight variations on it, is introduced as well in other cities. Alongside, eco-neighborhoods are increasingly gaining ground as well. In the Paris region, over 60 projects are on track to officially become eco-quartiers following a French labeling initiatives. All these urban initiatives require to rethink and reorganize freight transport. The next module of this e-course will provide concrete steps for action on how to achieve such initiatives successfully. Here's a list of references used to compile this presentation and I thank you for your attention.